I have been avoiding this rebuild for almost a year at this point. Not because I'm scared to do it, but because there hasn't been a reason to do it. However, the Pittsburgh Steelers now have a chance of making the playoffs this year, and that is thanks to Mason Rudolph. So today, we are going to continue with him as the starter for this entire rebuild, and we are going to see what this team looks like in the future with Mason Rudolph under center. And we are going to try to build up the rest of this offense around him because the rest of it isn't exactly amazing, even though they have a few good players. But I am very excited to get into this, so I'm gonna keep this intro short, as short as I can at least. But we did very well with the light goal on the last video. I actually haven't checked it in a while, so I might be lying, but I set the light goal of 2000. I didn't think we would get close, and we were the last time I checked, so <laughs> I'm gonna once again say if we can get 2000 likes on this video, I have another really fun, realistic rebuild planned, and it's gonna be my first first one with actual prospects. This might give it away, but it'll be the team that is going to have the number one pick. I will say that. So again, let me know y'all want to see that, and let me know y'all enjoy this video by dropping a like. It sounds stupid, but it helps push these videos to more people. So again, 2,000 likes. And of course, subscribe for more Madden Rebuilds, because that is literally all I do. In this offseason, I'm going to be doing a lot of fun ones, I'll say that. A lot of realistic rebuilds with whoever gets signed by teams, whoever gets drafted, all that kind of stuff. So you won't want to miss those. And massive shout out to Remake for suggesting this for months straight. I'm finally doing it now that it makes sense to. Their link is in the description though and if you want a shout out just let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below. Or if you don't care about that still let me know because it helps me know what y'all want to see. But without further ado let's get into this rebuild. There isn't much to go over with this team though. Y'all know the Steelers. There are a few good offensive players on this team but not many of them. Especially on the offensive line. There are players with potential here like Broderick Jones, but we're probably going to need a new left tackle, a new center, maybe even a new left guard eventually. We're going to need to add receivers for sure, at least one. And the defense is good, but if Cam Hayward retires, it's not going to be as good. We're probably going to need another safety, maybe even two more corners, at least one more. Probably an entirely new D-line by the end of this, other than Keanu Benton. New inside linebackers eventually. The edge group is very good though. So this this team does have a starting point, but this is going to be maybe more challenging than you might think. So enough yapping, let's get into the rebuild, and let's see how this team is doing at the midseason point of year one. Okay, well we are mid at the midseason point of year one. We are three and three. Now I mean at least we have a couple important upgrades. I pressed B instead of spending them, I'm stupid, but George Pickens and Broderick Jones will take that. And who are we going to have to re-sign? Levi Wallace, Keanu Neal, meh. Okay, we do have Mason Rudolph. I think that's the only important one. There's the fifth year for Najee, which looks pretty cheap, so I think we'll pick that up when we can. But honestly, I don't know if I should be concerned that if really Mason Rudolph is the only one. I don't know if everyone's going to be, you know, needing a contract in the same year. I guess we'll find out, though. But Mason Rudolph, four years, 19 mil, which is very cheap. He's on the... F I've never seen that message before. Like, legit. All right, well, we'll have to up that. I might just do that next week, just in case our cap situation goes, you know, downhill in the offseason. So, so let's lose to the Jags here and then we'll see if we can bring Mason Rudolph back now. Oh my god. <laughs> Something interesting is whenever I'm doing like a simulation, if I sim one game, it seems like we always lose that game. I don't know why. Maybe that's just me, but it's interesting. But five years, 28 mil for Mason Rudolph, which is very cheap for our starting quarterback for the entire rebuild. And now he resigns. But let's get to the end of the year and we will see what kind of record we end with. Okay, well we finish with... I I guess the opposite record of this team in real life we go 10 and or 7 and 10 when this team was 10 and 7 not too unrealistic records though I mean Ravens went what 13 and 4 Bengals weren't as good as that but here they have Joe Burrow the Browns were better but they have Joe Flacco in real life they would be starting Deshaun Watson here and who knows what would happen if this team started Mason Rudolph the entire year who, who knows but he was actually pretty decent here 3600 yards almost 3700 28 touchdowns 12 picks pretty good completion percentage. The picks were a little high, but not too bad at all. He was honestly better than I expected. <laughs> oh, Najee Harris. Uh, 900 yards, only 3.8 yards per carry, 14 touchdowns. The yards per carry are not great there. But Deontay Johnson, almost 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns, 900 yards for George Pickens. Not much outside of those two, though. Fryermith with almost 700 yards, I guess. Oh, and yeah, the blocking <laughs> wasn't great. Actually, though, James Daniels joins the all-castration 
creation team, which is fun, which if you don't know is my imaginary list of players that don't allow a sack in a season. In the last rebuild, we had a kicker join that team, which is something. I love that kickers do better than actual, you know, NFL offensive linemen in this game at offensive line, so that's cool. But Cole Holcomb led the team with 115 tackles, tackles for loss, 21 from Watt, 18 from Benton. I don't know why I said his name with the hard T. 17 for Highsmith, 10 for Cam Hayward, and sacks, 13 and a half from Watt, 11 for Highsmith, five and a half for Hayward, three for Benton as a rookie. And interceptions, four for Holcomb, two for Fitzpatrick, Wallace, and Rush, which I started Darius Rush, by the way, because I want to try and develop a young corner here. This team literally got three of my favorite corner prospects. They also got Joey Porter, who had a pick, same with Keanu Neal, and they also got Corey Trice, who unfortunately got injured before the year, but I loved all three of those players, and I was higher on them than most people were. But let's check out yearly awards. MVP goes to, of course, division rival Lamar Jackson, which just furthers my theory that if you are rebuilding a team, it makes your division rivals do better. I don't know why, but it does. Offensive player of the year also goes to Lamar Jackson. Surprisingly, no Deontay Johnson. I thought he would be around the bottom, but not here. Defensive player of the year goes to Khalil Mack. That's some. TJ Watt at number three. Alex Highsmith at eight. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Rasheed Rice. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Will Anderson. Keanu Benton at number two. I didn't think he would be that high, but now that I know he was that high, I wish he won it. Darius Rush at number four. Joey Porter at number six. Interesting list. Also, from at least these pictures right here, Joey Porter and Darius Rush look very similar. I don't know. It's it's kind of interesting. But let's get into the offseason and let's really work to fix this offensive line. I think that's going to be our first priority. Can't wait to see the Ravens win the Super Bowl here, or it's just going to be Cowboys Chiefs like it is every year. Maybe this will be the first rebuild where we don't see that Super Bowl. I hope. Okay, it's Cowboys Chargers. The Chargers win it 38 to 31. I hate to break it to you, EA, but I don't think they're quite that good in real life. I think they're 5 and 11 right now in real life. They'll probably be 5 and 12 by the time this video comes out. But I wonder if there's any cap space we can clear up because I kind of want to sign some free agents. If there are good linemen or good corners, maybe? Oh, and let's see if we hit any dev ups. I don't know who would have, but maybe. Okay, none on offense, unfortunately. And on defense, did Highsmith get superstar? Darius Rush got star, which is cool. Did he have super? No, he got superstar. Okay, we will take that. I wish it would give the reasoning, but I'm guessing it was the tackles for loss. I don't know. And yeah, Darius Rush got star. So we'll take that. But let's see if we do have anyone to re-sign. Anyone that I maybe missed? I don't know. We'll pick up the fifth year for uh, Najee, though, even though we do have Jalen Warren, who's maybe better. Everyone else is just depth for the most part, though. Quan Alexander was good when he played for this team, but then he got hurt. I've always been a Quan Alexander stan for some reason. I don't know why. He's just one of those players that's always a free agent, or just teams are reluctant to sign him, and then he plays and he does well. And I'm like, see? And I'm sure he'll sit again this offseason, and then, I don't know. But let's get into free agency. We do have a lot more money now. We have 30 mil. Does that see? Does that mean someone retired? <laughs> that's the only thing. Okay, cool. I, I didn't think Cam Hayward would retire year one. Uh, at least his memory lives on through his brother, Connor Hayward. I'm getting confused. I couldn't remember his name. I was going to call him Casey Hayward, uh, the, the corner. <laughs> uh, not him. So yeah, D-line is a problem sooner than I thought it would be. But let's see if there are any good free agents available. Eh, I mean, there are some good overall players, but they're old. I mean, it's Tyron Smith, Levante David, Bobby Wagner, Odell. Marquise Brown would be interesting. Ooh, I mean, he's not interested though, but that would be kind of fun. I could maybe see this team going after him in real life. Maybe. Ooh, should we steal a division rival in Grant Del Pitt? I feel like I get him a lot, but he has superstar dev a lot of the time. All right, well, I'm going to look through here and we will see what we want to do. All right, well, I'm just going to go for two players here, it's gonna be Grant Delpit and Kenneth Murray. I was gonna go for Jeremy Chin, but I was like, what's the point? It's not that hard to find like a 78 overall corner, which is maybe questionable if it should be that way, but it's really not hard at all. Plus Chin's 26. I mean, I don't know if we're gonna find a, you know, 78 overall corner this year, because I don't think that's what we're gonna prioritize necessarily in the draft, but we could. So we are gonna go for Grant Delpit and Kenneth Murray. You know, linebacker, another position where we could probably find a pretty decent one, but like, I want to sign somebody other than Grant Delpit. I don't want to be totally boring, so we'll go for these two. We'll see if either of them want to sign. It looks like they both do, so we get Grant Delpit and Kenneth Murray. 
we, you know, defense wasn't necessarily our problem, but our defense wasn't, it wasn't great this year. We had a good pass D, but we allowed a decent amount of points per game. So that should help a little bit. And now let's get to the draft. All right. And maybe this is a weird trade, but we're going to give Kenny Pickett to the Raiders for a second round pick. I feel like they would be interested in Kenny Pickett. I don't know why I feel that way. I kind of thought they would draft him. Honestly, I feel like I consistently mocked him there, but I do see Kenny Pickett do well a lot in simulation. So I feel like this is a good trade for the Raiders. Maybe I should have traded him to an NFC team now that I think about it. Ooh, especially because the Raiders do become good in this. I might have fucked up here. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> that might actually be really bad, uh, but we get a second round pick. So I guess we'll take it. But here in the draft, the commanders have the number one pick, which I guess is kind of, you know, realistic. I mean, it's not the number one pick in real life, but close. It's almost the top three. The I think the Cardinals have number two and just the Bears have number one from the Panthers. Oh, and I forgot to show him, but there was an insane looking quarterback. We'll have to check what his overall was after this. I'm guessing, I'm guessing the commanders drafted him. I don't know. Oh, and the corner's still available I was looking at. So maybe we will go corner this year. This dude is insane. Uh, his play rec's kind of bad. I never checked that, but A awareness, A man, A zone. I don't know what his press is, but it's probably decent. He's kind of built like a press man corner maybe, but he also has really good zone. So I don't know, but he has four, three, six speed, elite speed, elite excel. He ran a four, three flat at his pro day. Really good strength, good jumping. This dude looks insane. Now, will he have a dev trait? He might. He has bad injury and bad discipline. Oh shit. <laughs> this guy might be insane. What about Orson Hurst? Another iteration of a name that sounds like it's from 1942 or older. Hmm. These tackles don't look very good. Uh, well, Dobbs has decent ratings, but just really not that great greatest strength, at least for this game. Roe looks better, but I still think I'm going to go with Darius Rucker. Is that the name of a, <laughs> a country singer or some shit? It is. That's something. We're also about to have Darius Rucker and Darius Rush, so that's not going to be confusing or anything. Let's go with Darius Rucker, though, out of Notre Dame. Fuck. <laughs> Normal dev. All right, cool. Well, at least he looks really good on paper. That's really all I can predict, but no dev trait. That's tough. And now let's see. We're either going to go with a lineman or a a corner or no alignment or a receiver definitely not an another corner yet at least Julius Poe looks good but how the hell is 34 bench reps only solid strength I guess he only had 30 at his pro day but even that's like good I don't know I still don't like how that works I'll never stop complaining about it I don't think oh Paul Kelly eh, his ratings aren't that good but he has good strength Kevin James there are so many players named Kevin James in these draft classes I hate it oh whoa this guy's a first to second round talent what's his strength that's pretty good for a pass blocker. We'll go with him later for sure. He'll probably play tackle for us. Oh, wait. This guy might be kind of crazy too. He's a pass blocker with decent strength, or I guess solid technically, and then he actually has B run blocks, so we're definitely gonna go with him later too. We don't even need to go lineman at all right now. I think those guys are good enough. There's David Hill though. He looks really good. Okay, we'll just go with... Mm, we'll either go with him or we'll go with the receiver. I thought Devontae Justice looked insane. The more I look at him, the less good he looks, because he only has C awareness, which is a really important stat for overall, but he has 429 speed. Now, it's probably only going to be like 95 or something stupid, but it's it's still 429 speed, I guess. He also ran a 425 at his pro day. Elite speed, elite acceleration. I don't know if he's going to have a dev trait, but I hope. So let's take him. Shit. And yeah, how is a 429 only 96 speed, 94 excel? Like, this isn't a great start to the draft, but I don't feel like it's my fault. We're taking athletic freaks that already look technically refined and they don't have a dev trait. Whatever. <laughs> I think we'll go with David Hill here. Probably gonna have normal dev, but he looks good. Okay, he has hidden of all players. So we have a new center. That's good at least. And now let's go with Taylor McKinney, first to second round talent. This will probably be the last pick that I show. But yeah, again, first to second round talent in what, the third round? That's pretty good. So Taylor McKinney out of UCLA, let's take him. I'm kind of surprised he has hidden dev. Normally the pass protector players do not have hidden dev, at least when I take them. That's why I kind of stay away from them. But he he does, so I'm glad about that. But I'll make probably a couple more picks, and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, wait. Darius Rucker, our first pick, is an 81 overall. He isn't bad. <laughs> We're just unlucky. He doesn't have a dev trait. I, uh, he screamed dev trait. Looking really good, having bad injury, and being undisciplined, being extremely athletic. <laughs> just, of course he wouldn't. Devontae Justice was, I guess, a little more understandable, but still? I mean, he looks really good either way, but, you know, he would have even better, he would have been even better
better with, you know, even star dev. He's also wearing Antonio Brown's 84. You know what? Sure, why not, buddy? You can keep it. And then, you know, the two UCLA interior O linemen look really good. David Hill and Taylor McKinney. Keith Fowler also looks good. All three of them are at least a 75. Which one would be better at tackle? McKinney? Oh, I just, I didn't mean to do that. He's a 74. And then Fowler is a, also 74. Okay, well, we'll put McKinney because he is a worse power blocker. He's a worse scheme fit at guard. So we'll move him out to tackle. And then I took these two picks. Nick Sims isn't very good. Oh, he is one of the worst pass rushers I've ever seen in this game. He's a 69 at defensive tackle though. Nice. And then Darnell Colbert has hidden dev, which is cool. So maybe he can develop. And then the CPU picked another running back. I don't think we need a running back, but whatever. So definitely a solid draft, just a little unlucky early on, but we got some good linemen. So let's get into year two and we'll see what the team is looking like. Definitely a bit different on offense at least. And I guess defense. We're different overall. Okay. Well, the, the best QB from the class wasn't even the one I thought was the best. I didn't look at him too close, but BJ Springs is actually the best. He's really good throw power. That's why I bet the other guy doesn't have as good of throw power. I mean, this guy isn't like insane. He's a 79. What's his dev trait though? Superstar. That's pretty nice. So the, I feel like the commanders always draft a good QB in this game, which is maybe one of the most unrealistic things about this game. I don't know. <laughs> the one that I thought was really good was Brendan Hopkins. He also does have, maybe it was the other guy that I thought looked really good. I don't know. One of the QBs had four A's just on their little player card screen, whatever it's called. Hopkins also has superstar. He looks really good, both to the same division, which is interesting. It must have been Springs because I don't really, there's Max Byrne, which he was like a second round pick. I saw him go like a pick before us. Interesting. Also, why, why did the Browns draft another QB? Oh, I guess they don't have Deshaun Watson, but still, or they don't have Joe Flacco anymore, but still, you're already stuck with Watson for however long. I don't know. That's interesting. But here's a look at the team heading into year two. It is much better looking, I guess. I mean, we're only like one overall better, but we got a lot of rookies starting on offense, three linemen and a good receiver. Also, the Bengals just practice squatted this guy, Rakeem Thomas. He has hidden dev. I was just looking for a depth receiver. I mean, he's not a scheme fit at all, which is weird because he's 6'3", 210. His catch in traffic is just terrible. But I mean, either way, he looks pretty good. And hopefully our O-line can play well. I mean, I am worried because it is a bunch of rookies and rookie linemen usually play awful in this game, but we'll see. And the defense is pretty different too. I mean, we made a lot more changes year one than I expect. Darius Rucker, hopefully he can do well as a rookie. Hopefully he can get a dev trait. Maybe he'll win defensive rookie of the year. I don't know. It's hard for corners to win it, but hopefully. We added Kenneth Murray, Grant Delpit. Josh Pascal was available too, which, you know, he's a little undersized, but he is a really good run defender in real life. So we'll, <laughs> we'll have him play on the D line for at least this year. Now, fair warning, this could very well be a very much down year. We could be terrible this year. There is always one year where the team just massively underperforms. I kind of hope it's this year so we can get it out of the way, but we'll see. So let's get to the midseason point of year two and we'll see how we're looking. But at the midseason point of year two, we are three and four, which is about fair for our record or our overall probably. Ooh, I will say though, uh, <laughs> we only have 17.7 points per game on offense and are allowing 25 and a half per game. So uh, I don't know if we're going to regress or get better in the second half of the year. Usually if at the midseason we are like way underperforming comparing like points per game to like yards per game, usually we get better in the second half of the year, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. So, hey, maybe we are getting the bad year out of the way. Usually year two is the bad year, but sometimes it's year three. But we have a breakout wide receiver here. Who is this going to be? Is it going to be the rookie? No, it's George Pickens, but that's still cool. I don't think he's going to get three plus touchdowns or 150 total yards, but we'll see. <laughs> and we once again, of course, have some players to re-sign. Is it going to be bigger this year? Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if we want Deontay Johnson back. I mean, he's already 28 and he's not interested. He was really good last year though. Uh, he's not that expensive either. Five years, 76 mil. Okay, he takes it. Pat Fryermuth, obviously we'll bring him back. Five years, 75 and a half mil. He resigns. How's James Daniels doing this year? Still very good. Has yet to allow a single sack. Okay. Again, not interested, but four years, 41 mil, and he doesn't take it. Okay. Well, we'll definitely try to up that in the offseason. Rakeem Thomas, which again, this reveals the player's dev traits. <laughs> he has star dev. Do we even really want to re-sign him? I mean, I guess. Okay, he doesn't even take it. Whatever. Darius Rush, do you want to re-sign? Cool. At least someone resigns. And then I think that's all we're going to worry about for now. Jalen Warren isn't very expensive. We'll offer him three years at 18 mil and he resigns. I almost just ignored him for some reason. But let's 
see if we can hit the breakout for George Pickens. Okay, well, we lose to the Browns, and we didn't hit it, and he's blaming the team. That's cool. All right, well, let's let's get to the end of the year. But okay, at the end of year two, we finish 7-10. and 10, So the same as last year, despite having a better roster, which I guess maybe other teams had better rosters too, theoretically at least. I mean, maybe not. But uh, I saw Mason Rudolph's stats already. Those are the only stats I saw, and they are something. Uh, not as good as last year. 3,800 yards to only 21 touchdowns and 22 interceptions. He's doing his best Jameis Winston impression, I guess. I mean, it's not quite 30 for 30, but it's close. Najee Harris was a little better this year, though. 1,100 yards, 4.2 per carry, 9 touchdowns. I would start, I would, like, be comfortable with letting Najee Harris go, but Jalen Warren just isn't that good in this game for some reason. Like, I've never seen him do very well. But Deontay Johnson, 1,300 yards, 8 touchdowns. Insane year from him. 800 yards for Pickens, 600 yards for Fryermuth, and Devontae Justice didn't do much as a rookie, but that's fine. The blocking was better than I thought it would be. Our tackle duo wasn't amazing, but it was better than last year. I thought that would be the problem with this team, but it wasn't. And something interesting that I saw is David Hill has superstar dev. He's our only lineman with superstar, but at least we got one, so that's cool. But Cole Holcomb led the team with 126 tackles, 119 for Murray, 116 for Darius Rucker as a rookie at corner, which hopefully doesn't mean he was getting absolutely cooked, but it, it might. Uh, <laughs> TFLs, 21 for Highsmith, 17 for Watt, 14 for Pascal, and 13 for Benton, and sacks, still probably not as good as they should be. TJ Watt with only 13, which 13 is good, but like, come on now. <laughs> and then Highsmith with only six and a half, what is, I don't know how many sacks he gets in real life. He had 14 in 2022, okay, yeah, the numbers here aren't really super realistic, but when are they in Madden? But four sacks for Pascal, two for Benton and Ogunjobi, and we actually had a lot of interceptions, four for Darius Rush, three for Delpit, two for Holcomb, and then one for four players, including TJ Watt, which I guess is realistic. But MVP goes to Dak Prescott, Offensive Player of the Year goes to Lamar, again, of course. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Chris Jones, Watt at number two. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Steve Rogers for the Raiders. Devontae Justice at four, and Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Antoine Kelly for the Texans. Rucker all the way down at nine. I thought he, well, eh, he wasn't that good in coverage. He just had a lot of tackles, but this game overvalues tackles, so I thought it would boost him up a little bit. I guess people in real life overvalue tackles. <laughs> I don't know. But let's get into the offseason. And to be honest, I'm trying to come up with a game plan, but what do I fix? What do I do to this team? I can't change Mason Rudolph. Our O-line was good, even though that's like our probably lowest overall position group. Maybe the D-line, maybe we, I guess that's what we'll target, but the Chargers win another Super Bowl here, 31 to 16. Realism, what is it? I don't know. I'm just really trying to think. I mean, we can add another receiver. I don't feel like that was the problem though. And yeah, I guess we'll upgrade our D-line. I don't know, it's a tough situation when our lowest overall positions group, position groups are playing as our best, which is the case a lot of the time in Madden. And unfortunately, I don't think we hit any dev ups at all. I'm surprised Darius Rush didn't hit one. I'm kind of surprised Kenneth Murray didn't hit one or Cole Holcomb or Deontay Johnson. It is what it is though. But for the rest of the players we have to re-sign, we'll try to re-sign James Daniels. We'll up it a little bit. It'll be four years, 44 mil, and he doesn't take it. How much would a tag be? Teen mil? I mean, I want to sign some other players this year. <laughs> I don't want him to be the only, I mean, I guess we would still be able to sign other players, but if there's someone big, I want to be able to sign him. We'll let him go and try to re-sign him in free agency. I think that's our best course of action there, but hopefully there's some good players at other positions in this draft. Hopefully a good D-lineman, hopefully a good receiver that we can actually sign. We'll see. Oh, oh. Okay, this this is a pretty good free agent class. A lot better than last year. Okay, so I'm trying to clear some cap space here. I was going to trade Isaac Sayomalo, but most teams are broke right now, which is what always happens in franchise. So we're just going to have to cut him. It would save us almost eight mil, which is pretty good. I mean, he's good in real life. Don't get me wrong, but we kind of replaced him here. Same with Larry Ogunjobi, though. That'll save us seven mil. So we should have a decent amount of cap space now. There weren't many restructures I could do. The only one was Minka, but that also saved like over seven mil, so definitely more cap than what we had before. Oh wait, just kidding. I can restructure a lot more deals. I was treating this like it was the regular season, and in the regular season, if there are deals you can restructure, it shows them as positive rather than negative, so I can restructure some more of these. We'll see how much cap we end up with. Okay, well this is kind of an insane free agent class, especially if we actually get all these players, but I, I want to do well in a rebuild. I'm sick of not winning a Super Bowl. I guess it hasn't been that long since I've won a Super Bowl in a rebuild. Like, we made one in the last one in the last year. We just 
just lost it. But if we get all of these players, this roster is going to be crazy. This literally fixes all of our problems. I, I mean, not in terms of overall necessarily, but just how players have been playing too. Which I don't know how... Look, I, I watched rebuilds for a long time. I started watching rebuilds when I was like 13. I was what, like seven, almost eight years ago. Like <laughs> I've been watching them forever. I don't remember how other people did rebuilds. I can't remember if they signed players based off of who did poorly on their team or based off of overall. I can't remember, but I usually do it just based off of how players on the team are playing and kind of overall, it depends. But this is kind of a mix of that. Like I said, Nick Chubb would be both an overall upgrade and I'm hoping a performance upgrade. Najee's been good. He hasn't been insane though. And I think we might trade him away, unfortunately, because he's going to be due for a contract. The only thing that could be unrealistic about this is, I hate to say it, but I, I don't know how good Nick Chubb's going to be anymore. I mean, his injury was terrible. He's more of a power back though anyways, so it might be fine. I don't know. We'll just have to see, but we'll try to get Nick Chubb. Brandon Ayuk is why I said the whole, like, I don't know if people used to do rebuilds based off of like overall or <laughs> performance. I haven't watched a rebuild in like a couple years at this point. YouTube's funny because once you start making videos, a lot of people just stop watching other videos on the topic. And I definitely, I definitely have that syndrome. We'll say that. I also have another one. Uh, just ask your mother. That's really unfunny. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, Brandon, our receivers aren't playing terrible necessarily, but we don't have one who's like an insane overall. So we'll try to get Brandon Ayuk is the point I was trying to make that I took five minutes to explain. Leonard Williams will also try to get him because our D-line has been very much underperforming. James Daniels, we're going to try to bring him back. Matt Gay, because I haven't signed him in a rebuild in a long time. Months, it feels like. And he has a funny last name, obviously. And then Draymond Jones, also because our D-line has been kind of underperforming. So let's see if we can sign. I guess we're just signing the Seahawks D-line. I didn't even realize that. But let's see if we can sign these players. And we sign, or well, I don't know if we sign, but we do get Nick Chubb, Brandon Ayuk, Leonard Williams, and Matt Gay. We get everybody that does sign. And then we're still the only team interested in James Daniels and Draymond Jones. So let's see if they sign now. James Daniels does. How about Draymond Jones? The Colts are catching up. Why Why doesn't he want to sign? I mean, if we don't get him, that'll give us something to draft. Okay, yeah, we won't go for Draymond Jones. That'll save us a little bit of money. But now let's get to the draft. Okay, well, here we are going to trade Najee Harris to the Bears for a third round pick. I thought that would be fair value. I mean, running backs aren't that valuable in real life. Teams just don't really ever trade much for them. And if they do, it usually doesn't work out very well. But <laughs> the Bears had the lowest overall running back in the league. So we are sending Najee there. But in the draft, we pick at number nine. The commanders have the number one pick again. They go with a left tackle. They went with a QB who was really good last year. And now they go with a left tackle. Surely they'll be good now, right? Who knows? But honestly, I don't know what I want to do in this draft literally at all. There's some good looking players, but like we don't need a receiver. Larry Camp doesn't look that good anyway. I mean, he looks good, but I don't know. Damar Barlow is maybe the best. Eh. 4 3 2 speed is only great. Okay, sure. And he only has good acceleration. Okay, this guy isn't as good as he looked, I don't think. We could trade down here, honestly. There just aren't any good D tackles this year, really. I mean, at least not high up. All right, I think I'm going to trade down because, yeah, we don't really need corner. We don't need receiver. We don't need running back. We don't need, Q I mean, we maybe need QB, but we can't take QB. We don't need a lineman in really anymore, as far as I can tell, at least. We maybe need a linebacker, but I'm not taking that round one. This guy doesn't even look that good. I mean, he looks decent, but he's slow and has bad pursuit, so, eh. I mean, he's not that slow, but who do I want to trade down with? The Titans? What would be a good trade there? Let me see. But we're going to trade down with the Titans. We're getting a first this year, a first next year, a two, and a three. I didn't mean to have that two in here. I, I have to give that back to him. <laughs> but it's two firsts, a third, and a fourth. I need to give that two back. I'm surprised that went through. That was a lot of value, but I mean, eh. was it 41 we took? No, I think it was 59. Yeah. But now let's look for a defensive tackle, and hopefully there is still a good one available. Okay, maybe. <laughs> there might be. I honestly think the best looking one is the one I focus scouted, Graham LeBlanc. He's a first to second round talent, which is decent value for right now. He just doesn't have very good pursuit. Matt Thompson looks similar, just not as strong. He might be a better pass rusher, though. He might be better. It's hard to 
to say because I don't really have any of them focus scouted. I wonder if we can get both. I mean, why not? <laughs> we don't really have anything else to draft. We'll go with Matt Thompson first because he has a chance to be better. He's listed as a power rusher, so hopefully he has, I mean, hopefully he has A power moves, but it'll at least be a B. I don't know. His tackle isn't that good, and he doesn't have any A stats. He might have A power moves, but that's it. I don't know. We'll take a chance. Matt Thompson, normal dev, of course. <laughs> what did I expect? And now we will go with the one who is hopefully better in Graham LeBlanc. There's also Otis Lawson who, oh, oof. maybe I should have just taken him. Maybe I should just take him. Yeah, sure. Otis Lawson out of Notre Dame. Sounds good. Hidden Dev, 93 strength. I'm surprised it's only 93. <laughs> he had like 41 bench reps, but he looks good either way. But I might make one or two more picks. We'll see, but I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well, this was a, an interesting draft. I mean, I'm glad we got some value for trading down. We didn't get anyone crazy though at all. Matt Thompson is a 74 at defensive end. Like he isn't bad there. He was only a 73 at defensive tackle. He's not bad though. He's whatever. Otis Lawson is definitely better though. 75 overall with hidden. Looks like a really good run defender, but yeah, he's a decent pass rusher too. He isn't terrible. And let's see, I think Kennard was, yeah, Dom Kennard was my last pick. Gerard Oliver, it's kind of rare to find like a really good safety in the third round. I mean, at least I, I mean, maybe I just never look at safety. It's probably not that rare. Just normally I have good safeties and rebuilds already, but he's really good man. He was listed with a man. Not very good pursuit, but other than that, he's pretty good. Jonathan Kendricks looks good at guard. Greg Whiting at receiver looks good. Did he have a dev trait? He did. Okay. I mean, yeah, he looks good. And then Dom Kennard didn't have a dev trait, but he's still a 75 overall. Like, I'm not going to complain about that. And then the CPU did interesting things. A uh, good running back. He has a dev trait. I mean, he's a little redundant. We already have two other good running backs. And then Jimmy German, which is a name. No dev trait, but he looks all right. We already have enough corners though. Like, I don't know why it drafted corner. Ooh, Davion Lawrence has hidden dev. He would be an outside linebacker for us. What's his overall there? 68, that's not bad. Only goes down one. I don't feel like changes changing his number. We'll keep him with 94. Were there any crazy players in this draft though? Honestly? Ooh, there was a really good safety. 82 overall, Matt Reddick. He looks nice. Out of Washington. There are so many Washington State players in these drafts, which makes me happy as a Washington State fan, but it doesn't make much sense. Ah, oh, DeMar Barlow is good. Let me guess. He has X factor because I didn't take him, but if I did take him, he probably would have had normal. No, he only has star. Okay. I mean, honestly, our corners have been playing fine. I could have upgraded over Darius Rush, but he's played really well, so I don't want to. But let's get into year three now, which now with a much better roster, and we will see how the team is looking. But here's a look at the team heading into year three. We are looking pretty good. Again, definitely a few changes to the team this offseason. We added Nick Chubb and Brandon Ayuk on offense. We now have an 87 overall offense, and it would be even better if we had, you know, a QB that wasn't Mason Rudolph. I mean, maybe that's disrespectful, but he's not a very good overall here. And the defense is mostly the same other than the D-line. The D-line is the only thing that's different, but it looks much better this year. So hopefully we don't massively underperform. We will see. So let's get to the midseason point of your three, and we'll see how we're doing. All right, maybe we'll just never escape three wins at the midseason point because we are three and four. Uh, <laughs> we have an 86 overall team. I don't know what the problem is, but we're not that good still. Where does an 86 rank? It's probably not like the top top, but uh, it, it might be. Okay, the 49ers have an 87. The Eagles also have an 86. The Cowboys have an 87, but it looks like we're tied for the third best roster and we're three and four. <laughs> so that's cool. Is Mason Rudolph just bad? Is that the, please tell me that isn't the problem because I don't know what to do about that. Oh no. <laughs> well, we'll try to build as good of a team around him as we can, but it's not looking pretty so far. What if we change the offense up? I mean, we might as well. It's been terrible. Honestly, our defense has been awful too. Let's just change all our playbooks. What do we want to do? I don't want to lean fully into the pass game when our quarterback is Mason Rudolph and our running back is Nick Chubb. So I'm going to go, <laughs> if I can find it, I'm going to go with the Bills offense and the Rams defense usually works pretty well for me. Usually the Steelers defense is good, but of course when I use it, it's dog shit. So I don't know what to do about that. We'll try the Rams. We'll see what this does, <laughs> but we can only do so much for Mason Rudolph, to be honest. But who do we have to re-sign here? That's a big question too. Oh, just TJ Watt. No big deal. George Pickens, Cole Holcomb. Uh, honestly, TJ Watt hasn't been as good as he is in real life here, but still four years, 106 mil. That works. He takes it. And I don't know if we're going to be able to bring George Pickens back. If he was interested, then yes, but we don't have any more money. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. But I mean, we have other receivers to be fair. Even if he does leave, we have Greg Whiting that we drafted last year 
who looks pretty good. So I think we'll be fine. Uh, famous last words, maybe. I don't know. But let's get to the end of year three and we'll just see how we finish. I mean, that's all we can really do. Okay, well, hey, we actually finished with a winning record, finally. We finished nine and eight and our offense got a lot better in the second half of the year. We finished 10th in points per game. Our defense was still not good, but it's better than it was at the midseason. So I think it was a good call to switch those playbooks around. You know, I don't love playing the game of let's find the good playbook every single rebuild, but it's kind of what you got to do in this game, unfortunately, if you want to win like at all. But let's check out our season stats. Hopefully Mason Rudolph did better and he definitely did. Still a lot of interceptions, but 3,500 yards, 26 touchdowns, 17 picks. I mean, through the last like 10 games or however many it was, he threw what, 18 touchdowns and I guess nine interceptions. So that's a little bit better. I mean, that's a better rate than he had at the midseason. So we'll take that. Not a great completion percentage, but I've seen worse, much worse. Nick Chubb was really good though. 1,300 yards, 5.2 per carry, 17 touchdowns. Brandon Ayuk was our leading receiver with only 971 yards, 10 touchdowns. Pickens was solid. Johnson was fine-ish. The blocking was really good. That's surprising. So it, it's not the offensive line's fault that Mason Rudolph sucks. It's just his. And then on defense, Cole Holcomb, 125 tackles, led the team 100 for Kenneth Murray. Tackles for loss, 24 for TJ Watt, 18 for Benton, 15 for Leonard Williams, 13 for Alex Highsmith, and sacks, 17 for TJ Watt. Finally, a really good number. I mean, 13 is really good too, but I mean, he gets more in real life to be fair. 15 for Alex Highsmith, six and a half for Leonard Williams. Not much outside of those three though. And then interceptions, what? Did I fuck something up? <laughs> three for Alex Highsmith led the team. Two for Holcomb, Porter, Rush, and Rucker, and then one for Delpit and Oliver. What did I do wrong? What happened? Uh, did I him at sub linebacker on accident? No. <laughs> um, the Rams are a three, four. I guess this game's just weird. I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. It's always an, in it's always a Madden rebuild when <laughs> Alex Highsmith is leading your team in interceptions when you have Minka Fitzpatrick and Joey Porter Jr. and <laughs> Grant, or yeah, Grant Delpit and uh, country star Darius Rucker at corner. I feel like Madden simulation is the closest you can get to a fever dream in a video game. I mean, maybe not. There are some weird games out there, but I mean, the shit that happens in simulation is something. <laughs> like if I really went on a deep dive, I could really find some stupid stuff, I bet. Like yeah, Mac Jones, 3,900 yards, 33 touchdowns, seven picks. Davis Mills is now the quarterback of the Packers and I don't know where Jordan Love is. He's on the Falcons, all right. Bijan hit 2,000 yards and had 6.9 yards per carry, nice. Isaiah Hodgins had 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns, that's fun. Oh, this should be, oh yeah, 21 sacks allowed from Jedrick Wills, that's cool. Yeah, Madden's always something, but let's check out yearly awards. MVP goes to, not Lamar Jackson, surprisingly. It goes to Patrick Mahomes. Shockingly, no Mason Rudolph. Offensive player of the year goes to Rasheed Rice. Defensive player of the year goes to Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt at number two, so we will take that. Surprisingly, TJ Watt still doesn't have a defensive player of the year here, but at least it goes to a Steelers player. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Tony Collins for the Browns. Of course, a division rival would win it, whatever. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Nate Franklin for the Dolphins. Also, no Steelers. But let's get into what is probably the final offseason, and we will see what we can do to this team. But in the Super Bowl, the Chiefs take down the Jordan Love-led Falcons, 28-21. to There's our Chiefs Super Bowl. Still no Chiefs Cowboys. Maybe this will be the first rebuild where we can escape that. I hope. I sure hope. But for re-signings, uh, we'll pick up the fifth year for Broderick Jones. I think that's about all we can do. Finally, Cole Holcomb gets star dev in the year we can't re-sign him. Uh, maybe we can restructure some deals. Let me see. Because I definitely want George Pickens back, at least. If we don't get Cole Holcomb, whatever. He's been good, but like, eh. Okay, yeah, I think we'll be able to free up, free up some money. Ew, Nick Chubb wearing 35. I mean, it's maybe more cursed that he's on the Steelers, but that's something. Okay, well, I was able to free up a little money. We now have 34 mil. I guess that's not a little money. I mean, I would I would do some things for that kind of money, but five years, 69 mil for George Pickens. It's kind of a lot. Should I wait and see if we can get a better receiver, but sign him if he's the best option? I think we'll do that. I don't think that'll make Steelers fans be like very happy, but it, it might be a good strat. Same with Cole Holcomb. Yeah, I think that's going to be the plan. Let's see who's available in free agency, and then we'll think about re-signing those two. I mean, worst case scenario, we just don't get either of them back and then <laughs> draft or We might not even need to draft a receiver, but maybe draft a linebacker. Ooh, okay. Wait, this is a strong free agent class. Um, is George Pickens the best receiver? <laughs> I think he is. Oh, okay. Not a very good receiver class, unfortunately. How about linebacker? I didn't see any other good linebackers either. I mean, there's Juwan Bentley. 
I don't know. We'll see, but I kind of want Jalen Ramsey. Still a 98 here. It looks like he developed despite being old. We can get him, but if we do, we won't be able to get anyone else, but he might be worth it. Let me see how he's been playing. Five picks, 13 pass deflections last year. That was pretty good. Uh, okay, we might have to sign him. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. Kenny Pickett's available. He didn't really do much for the Raiders, it seemed like, but we will try to get Jalen Ramsey and Cole Holcomb back. We just can't afford George Pickens, unfortunately, if we go for Jalen Ramsey, but we can't afford Cole Holcomb. So let's see if we can, well, hold on. Let me see if we can restructure anyone else. I didn't go through absolutely everybody. Let me see what we can do. All right, we're doing some things in free agency. Um, <laughs> Instead of going for George Pickens, I was thinking there are usually crazy receivers in the draft anyways, and we won't have literally anything else to draft if we re-sign George Pickens. So instead, we are gonna go for Jalen Ramsey, Khalil Mack, and Cole Holcomb. Now defensive player of the year. Has he ever won a defensive player of the year in real life? I don't think he has, but well, he might have. I'm not sure, but he's always good in this game for some I mean, he's been good in real life this year, but he's like insane in this game. So we'll try to bring him in. I hope we can get Jalen Ramsey. I mean, if we don't get Jalen Ramsey, that just completely ruins any plans I had for this off season. But let's see if we can sign these three players. Ramsey signs and we don't get him. He goes back to the Jags, which is interesting. Not a good interesting though. Uh, that's awful. That's almost the worst thing that could have happened. Cool. What do we do now? We could get Shaquille Leonard, I guess, but we're gonna have a lot of leftover money. Okay, well, because we couldn't get Jalen Ramsey, this is the free agent class we're gonna go for. It's gonna be Khalil Mack. You know what? What if we just trade for someone really good? Why don't we do that? I mean, none of these guys are gonna do anything for us. I will say I wanna go for Jawan Bentley because that'll be an upgrade, but Khalil Mac could be too, but we have 20 mil to work with. Let's let's look at a trade. Do I know what we want to trade for? Uh, no. <laughs> I want to trade for someone though. Yeah, what position would we even trade for? <laughs> eh, we'll look for a corner. Let's see. Ooh, this is harder than I expect. Are we gonna have to give up a first? Let me see. All right, well, we're trading Nick Sims, one of our defensive tackles, and a first round pick for Jalen Johnson in a second. The Bears apparently don't want Jalen Johnson for some reason, so we'll take him. I don't know why they didn't extend him at the midseason, and he's been like a top three corner this year, so sucks to be the Bears. But now let's see if we can sign the other two free agents. Or I guess, yeah, the two free agents. Khalil Mack and Juwan Bentley. We get Juwan Bentley. Khalil Mack doesn't want to sign. Whatever. <laughs> Low-key rough free agent class, but we'll see if Mack signs. If not, who cares? Let's get to the draft. But in the draft, we pick at number 18. The Jets pick at number one. And we have one thing that we need, pretty much. <laughs> and unfortunately, both of the really good-looking receivers are gone. KJ Barton looks good. Not that good though. I mean, he looks good on paper. I would love a 429 speed receiver with good receiving ability. Honestly, he doesn't even have the best receiving ability though. He really only has deep route. He has spec catch, which is interesting. He has pretty good release and he has speed. I don't think he's that good. It would make sense if he was good, but based on the last deep threat receiver I took, I don't think he's that good. Now Kendrick Boykin looks pretty good. Now he is not going to have a dev trait. That's the only problem. Playmate receivers never have a dev trait for some reason. I mean, very, very, very rarely. But I think he's the best overall looking receiver. Jaden Prince looks pretty good. I feel like the other deep threat receivers may be better though. All right, let's go with Kendrick Boykin. Again, gonna have normal. Maybe not because I'm saying so much that he's going to have normal. The game will just try its hardest to prove me wrong. I don't know. But he's 6'2", 202, 22 years old, left-handed, just like me for real, out of Virginia. Sure, we'll take him. Of course, of course the game would prove me wrong. I, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I won't complain. He looks good, but of course. He looks really good though. I mean, we'll see. I don't want to get too excited. And now, I don't know what else to pick. We could go with another D lineman. There are some decent looking ones. How about Brian Thomas? What's his combine look like? Pretty good. He's a, another position, another type that usually has normal. So I'm going to say he has normal, but I, I don't know anymore. Mike Perriman looks good too. He's just not a very good pass rusher. Ooh, the actual defensive tackles. Hold on. Logan Manley. His awareness isn't very good, but I mean, he's a run stopper with at least B power moves and potentially even A finesse moves. Really good strength too. I mean, the awareness is the only thing that scares me, but that's it. Oh, okay. Miles Wilkins might be better. He doesn't have very good pursuit though, but even better speed and maybe even better strength. Yeah, let's go with Niles. Oh, it's Niles Wilkins, not Miles, whatever. Niles Wilkins out of Michigan State. Sounds good. Of course he has normal. <laughs> 
Why wouldn't he? The more and more I, I draft, the more and more defeated I feel. So that's fun. Brian Thomas, are you good? Okay, he has hidden at least. The type of player that usually has normal had hidden, and then the type of player that usually had hidden had normal, so that's cool. But let's see, is there a good corner left? Are we gonna go with another Boykin? Trey Boykin, what's your speed? Ooh, pretty good. Okay, I, I like him. Maurice Patton might be good. I usually like slot corner types. They're usually pretty good. He's not that fast. Eh, he looks all right. He's probably a good value pick for where he's supposed to go, but I think the other one's better. Let me see, maybe one of these guys have like crazy speed or something. Ty House has really good speed. Ooh, nah, I think Trey Boykin's better. Yeah, we'll go with Trey Boykin out of Connecticut as our last pick. Hidden Dev, 93 speed, 95 Excel, we'll take that. I don't know if he's, he could be good enough to start. I'm not sure though. We'll find out. Or no, we already, <laughs> Never mind. we traded for Deontay John, or not Deontay Johnson, J Jalen Johnson. There's so many, there's so many Johnsons in the NFL. Uh, pause, I just get all their names mixed. Yeah, Jalen Johnson. I was gonna say Jelani Johnson, the tight end, whatever. I mean, that corner looked like good value either way, even if he won't play. But with that, I might make one more pick and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well, uh, I wish we could have had this receiver, Nick Warwick, who went at number two. He's an 83 overall with hidden dev, 99 jumping, 94 spec catch, 90 release as a rookie. What's his dev trait? Yeah, that's about what I expected. Well, <laughs> I wish we were terrible last year so we could have got him, but oh well. Donovan Levy or Levi, probably Levy, isn't as good as I thought he would be, but he's still better than who we, well, does he have a dev trait? He does. What's his dev trait? Superstar, cool. He looks like a running back. He's built weird. He's thick. I mean, I guess that's kind of what, you know, playmaker receivers are a little bit. But as for our draft, we did pretty well. Kendrick Boykin is a 77. I guess we're TBD on what his dev trait's gonna be, but 87 spec catch, 90 speed, 94 excel, 84 catching, good medium route, good agility. He looks good. Niles Wilkins doesn't look that good necessarily. He's only a 74. I just don't know how to draft defensive tackles, apparently. Brian Thomas is only a 73, but at least he has hidden. And Trey Boykin, the better of the Boykins. Sounds like a 70s TV show or something. 93 speed, 95 excel. I didn't like open my mouth all the way when I said that for some reason, so it came out weird, but he looks good. Better than I expected. I thought he would be like a 76, but you know, if we didn't trade for Jalen Johnson, he would probably be pretty good, but we, we just have better players. I wonder if we should do something weird, like put him at safety and move like Grant Delpit to linebacker. Yeah, I don't think that would go very well. I don't know. It would probably make our team a better overall, but yeah, yeah I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. I think I made almost every picks here. <laughs> Levine isn't great. I just wanted depth at O-line because I didn't feel like signing anyone, but Darren Barber looks pretty good. He's a 73, only normal dev. And then the famous late round blocking tight end, Trey Dixon here. You know what? I don't care. I'm going to spoil what his dev trade is. It's not like we're going to start him anyways. Now that I'm spoiling it, it's only gonna be star, but yeah, see, that's what I get for spoiling it. It would have been X Factor if I didn't. A lot of the time, those tight ends do have X Factor, though. At least superstar, which I don't really get why. Like, how many, how many good blocking only tight ends are there in the league? There's there's Josh Oliver, but like, he's not insane. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, wh why is that a thing? Like, why? I mean, star I get, but X Factor, superstar? I, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into the fourth and final year of the rebuild. But here's a look at the team heading into the fourth and final year of the rebuild. Expect longer rebuilds coming up soon. I've just been busy lately, but you know, I hope y'all still enjoy these. This is probably going to be a long video, just not many years. I want to really emphasize this. Let me know down below if you have any fun rebuild ideas because it really helps me to know what y'all want to see. Sometimes I have a hard time guessing. <laughs> I usually can, you know, guess pretty well, but really let me know down below. If there's anything you could think of, that would be cool. Just let me know. But the team is looking very nice heading into year number four. I almost said year six. I'm faded. I don't know. There aren't really any problems with our offense other than Mason Rudolph, who's been playing pretty poorly since year one. Year one, he did well, but he's been kind of downhill since then. Well, especially in year two, but year three kind of bounced back. We'll see how he does this year. Now in a new offense for a full season instead of just, you know, the second half of last year. But the defense is very nice and should develop a little bit. It's kind of older now. It probably won't develop too much, but there still are some younger players sprinkled throughout, I guess. But again, I'm interested to see how we do this year. So let's just get straight to the end of the season and we will see how we do. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number four. And if you've seen one of my videos before, y'all know why 
were here. Before I reveal how we did in year four, if you haven't already, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Again, 2,000 likes, and I never remember what I promised. Oh yeah, I said I'll do a uh, draft with real prospects. I'm gonna start working on my own, like, custom draft classes, which I kind of did last year, but I didn't really have the time to finish them. I just made, like, a few prospects. Not a few, but I didn't make all of them. This year, I'm gonna go hard with it, because now I make, like, custom overalls for, like, Madden ratings, already, you know, players in Madden, but I'll just shift my focus to raw, or, uh, draft class creation. That was hard for me to get that sentence out, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. So yeah, again, if once we hit 2,000 likes, I will do one of those. I'll probably do one anyways, but it'd be fun if we hit 2,000 likes, so be sure to do it. It helps push these to more people. And expect draft-related content very soon on my second channel. Link to that in the description if you haven't already subscribed there. I'm gonna have a Madden-related video coming out there too that's just too short to post on this channel, but it's one that y'all want to see. I just haven't really found the time to make it, but I'll do it soon. But anyways, enough yapping, enough plugging. In year number four, we somehow made the playoffs going 10 and 7. I say somehow because at the midseason, we were 2 and 4. Now, I guess I should have checked this because our two wins came in the two most recent games. We got beat 31 to nothing by the Ravens. I guess maybe we just had a hard schedule because, I mean, it's the Chargers who won two Super Bowls here. The Cowboys, the Jags, and the Ravens. I don't know, though. We were very streaky. We, <laughs> wow, that's actually insane. We lost four in a row. We won five in a row. We lost two in a row. We won five in a row, and then we lost our last game. So hopefully we're not on another losing streak right now, but if we are, there's legit nothing I can do about it. Because what's our team overall? We're an 88, but where does that rank in the league? The Ravens are also an 88. They are good here. The Eagles are also an 88. The Chiefs are also an 88. So we are tied for the best roster with three other teams. I think the Chiefs is slightly better because they have an 89 and an 88, but I mean, it's the same overall. Just their offense is a little better, I think it said. But we're going to be taking on the Titans in the wild card, who are 11 and 6, but only an 83 overall. As I always say, overall doesn't matter literally at all in this game. <laughs> but finally, Mason Rudolph had a very good season. 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, only 8 picks. Almost a nice completion percentage, just one away from that. Nick Chubb, 1,400 yards, 5.5 per carry, 14 touchdowns. Brandon Ayuk, 900 yards, 10 touchdowns. Not as good as he has been, but it's a different offense now. Kendrick Boykin is a rookie, though. 950 yards, 5 touchdowns. Deontay Johnson was whatever. No, I was thinking of... <laughs> Wait, I saw Brandon Ayuk, and I was just thinking number one receiver, even though Deontay Johnson has been our number one receiver. He also wasn't as good as he has been, though. Is He was the one I was thinking of when I was thinking of Brandon Ayuk. Whatever. And for blocking, I actually benched Broderick Jones at the midseason, because if you <laughs> can see here, he was allowing a sack per game, and <laughs> yeah, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. So we put in Garrett Bowles, who was just a random free agent, which is kind of surprising. He plays like shit in this game normally, but he actually held up decently well, so we'll take it. And then on defense, I also checked this in the midseason. Hopefully we rebounded here, but Juwan Bentley, 122 tackles led the team. Tackles for loss. Keanu Benton with 18, 16 for Leonard Williams, 15 for Watt, and 11 for Highsmith, and sacks, 7 for TJ Watt. Hmm. 5 for Alex Highsmith, 5 for Khalil Mack as a rotational pass rusher, 4 for Leonard Williams. Okay, I think we had a problem here. Uh, has TJ Watt ever had 7 sacks in a full healthy season? I mean, he hit 5 one year, but he got injured that year. Oh, his rookie year, he had 7. I don't know if that was in full snaps, though, so love the realism here. That's cool. For interception, though, Jalen Johnson had six. Outside of him, though, two for Bentley and Murray, and then one for a few players. But let's check out yearly awards. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes. Shocker. Offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor. Defensive player of the year goes to Brandon Etienne for the Chargers, which isn't common of a last name. He must be related to the other two, I guess. Cole Holcomb, of course, got signed by the Browns and did really well. Why wouldn't he? Offensive rookie of the year goes to Hugh Hopkins for the Patriots. Kendrick Boykin at four. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Brandon ETN. Wait, he was, oh, he was straight up defensive player of the year as a rookie. I was just thinking rookie. I don't know why, but he also was the defensive rookie of the year, obviously, if you're winning defensive player of the year as a rookie. So a disappointing year, but I mean, what else is new? That's just the theme of this game. You have a good overall and you're going to underperform. That's just how it is. We have an upgrade for Jalen Warren, at least though, now up to an 84, which he maybe should be anyways, but whatever. We have a first of many scenario though, which it's kind of sad that this is our first playoff game, but like I said, I've done all I can. I am building a good team 
team and that's all I can do. But let's simulate this game against the Titans and I feel like we all know how this is gonna go, unfortunately. Okay, no, we do smoke them. I'm surprised, but I'll take it. We win 35 to 13 and we have a recap for the, you know, first of many. Give us those sweet, juicy staff points, as I always say, because I'm fucking weird. I don't know. We'll take it. And now we're gonna be taking on what feels like an unwinnable game. It is the 14 and 3 Kansas City Chiefs, which they've been good in real life, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they're almost too good in this game where they're they're not quite unbeatable because they don't win the Super Bowl every year. But I mean, I just I wish there was diversity. Like eventually at some point in real life, the Chiefs aren't gonna be good anymore. Eventually. I mean, even the Patriots dynasty ended, but I don't think it ever ends in this game. Maybe when they lose Patrick Mahomes, but I I don't know. Anyways, let's simulate this game out and we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. We lose 21 to 13. At least it was close-ish, but we're going out sad here. We lose in the divisional to the Chiefs. But hey, again, I did all I could. We built a ridiculous team around Mason Rudolph. It would have been even better if, you know, we had a high overall QB, but this team's nice. Don't get me wrong. But again, if you enjoyed me yapping for about an hour, probably, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe if you for some reason haven't already. I mean, if you haven't already, you're probably not going to, but I would appreciate it. And I said this in the last video, but expect a lot of fun rebuilds for the offseason. I'm excited to get into all the, you know, offseason related moves, whatever is going to happen this year, like do a rebuild with whoever, you know, drafts Caleb Williams. We'll see all that kind of stuff. So turn on notifications for the channel if you haven't already to make sure you don't miss any of those because it should be fun. On screen now is a, probably a video YouTube thinks you would like. So feel free to click one of those. But thank you all so much for watching. And with that, I will see you all again in the next video. Goodbye.